Hello, welcome to the Wisconsin Historical Society Press Storytime Live. Being presented for the next few weeks on Wednesdays, but I believe also available perhaps in an archived format. My name is Pam Cameron. I'm the author of Sport, Ship Dog of the Great Lakes, and I have Sport here in his plush self. In a few minutes, I'll read you the story. But first, Sport and I, we need to thank some people. We need to thank the press, the crew that worked so hard and was so focused and enthusiastic about Sport's story. And that made it possible for Sport's story to be published. We'd also like to thank Renee Grafe, the illustrator of Sport, who spent countless hours making sure that the illustrations were historically accurate and brought sports life to life for us today. As I read the story, I hope you'll enjoy the illustrations. I hope you enjoy hearing about sports story. Thank you. Sport, ship dog of the Great Lakes. With a storm rolling in over Lake Michigan, the docks seemed even busier than usual. Big ships made their way into port and dropped anchor in the Milwaukee River. Sirens and bells sounded warnings. Hurried dock workers shouted to each other in the rain. No one noticed the skinny puppy wandering the docks. No one heard him when he barked nervously into the wind. Until the hyacinth arrived. Off the starboard, dog in the water, dog in the water. Captain, we're taking the dinghy down. Albert and Clifford didn't wait for their captains. Okay. Quickly, the two crewmen lowered the ship into the water. They steered the dinghy, trying to reach the puppy before the river current carried him into the lake. Come here, puppy. Come here, pup. We'll get you. Just as they reached the dog, Albert reached out. He wrapped his hands around the puppy and pulled him to safety. Back on the hyacinth, some of the crew gathered round. Clifford toweled the puppy dry. I can't believe it. The fur next to his body is dry, and he's not even shaking. Look at his paws, Albert said. They're webbed like a duck. What kind of dog is he, Clifford wondered. The captain ran his hands over the dog's head and down to his haunches. He looks like he's part Newfoundland, a Newfie. The captain knew that Newfies are great water dogs. Their double coat keeps them warm, and their web paws help them swim. An idea formed in the captain's head. We could use a good ship dog. This dog could be the one. Everyone liked this idea. They decided to name their new friend Sport, and that's how a homeless puppy found a home on a ship. Sport had fun exploring his new home. He roamed from bow to stern, from port to starboard. He found places to sleep and stand watch, and especially to eat. Now here is Renee's illustration, and she has labeled many parts of the ship I actually see Sport right there. There's Sport. The ship was 160 feet long. Three times a day, the cook rang a dinner bell. The crew hustled to the mess where they found biscuits, stew, and fruit pies. Sport was a growing puppy. 
he was always the first to clean his plate. In between meals, Sport watched the crew members as they worked. They loaded coal, kerosene, lumber, tools, paint, furniture, firewood, and even small boats came on the hyacinth. Watch out for Sport, the crew would call. Quickly, Sport learned to stay out of the way. You can see, and there's the pilot house right there. The Hyacinth was a lighthouse tender. Its main job was to take supplies to all the lighthouses in, on Lake Michigan. Soon, Sport had friends all around the lake. From Rocky Manitowoc to Sandy Luddington. From windy Michigan City way up to quiet Manistique. From busy Chicago up to quiet Green Bay. Other ships blew their horns as they passed. They tooted a sailor's captain's salute. One long blast and two shorts. Woo! 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 This was a friendly way to say thank you for all the work the Hyacinth's crew did to keep other ships safe on the Lake Michigan. Today the crew was preparing for another ship trip. Sport ran around the deck looking in all the boxes. The captain made sure the Hyacinth and its crew were ready. All cargo lashed and tight. Aye aye, Captain. Anchors pulled. Aye aye, Captain. Heave ho! We're off. The engine shuddered as it powered up. Then the ship chugged away. The Hyacinth steamed to the Cana Island Lighthouse. There's the light Cana Island Lighthouse. The crew and the took supplies from the Hyacinth to Cana Island in a rowboat. When the rowboat got close to shore, the crew needed Sport's help. Okay, Sport, Albert said. Show us how smart you are. Albert shook out a rope and threw it into the water. Sport carried the line to shore. Then it could be used to pull the boat in. The lighthouse keeper's family ran out to greet Sport. The children squealed in delight at the sight of, the, of a dog bringing them their supplies. When everything was unloaded, it was time to say goodbye. Sport and the Hyacinth crew had more stops to make. See you next time, Sport, the children said. One day, Sport watched as the crew placed a buoy to mark a hidden shallow area near Big Sabo Point Lighthouse. Just as Clifford climbed to the top of the buoy to adjust the light, his tool bag dropped. You can see it there in the water. Sport dove in. He grabbed the bag and dragged it back to the boat. Albert then steered the dinghy closer to the buoy so Clifford could climb aboard. Then they picked up Sport from the water. Let's get you home, Sport, Albert said. We're not leaving you behind. The crew worked hard each spring. They had to get all the lights and the buoys operating for the shipping season. The captain wanted his crew to have some fun too. Often, when the crew docked for the night, the crew would go ashore to play baseball. They played against crews from other ships. One night, Sport ran onto the field. He wanted to join his team. 
A player from the other team yelled, Get that mutt off the field! Get that mutt off the field! But the crowd started yelling, Sport! 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 We want Sport! And so Sport joined the team. He caught the ball. He tagged players in outfield. Of course, he needed someone else to bat for him. One morning, this hyacinth sailed into a thick fog. The quiet was eerie, unbroken by waves or wind. Then the sound of a foghorn broke the stillness. It was the Grand Traverse Lighthouse's foghorn. Now at the top of the page here, Renee's drawn the signaling from that foghorn. Every foghorn and every lighthouse had different signals compared to others. So if a ship, when a ship was out on the water, they would hear a certain signal or characteristic and they would know, yep, that's where we are because that's the signal from that, that's the light signal from that lighthouse or that's the fog signal. Cut the engine now, the captain told his first officer. Anchors down. Listen for any ships coming toward us. Sport's ears twitched up. He ran to the bow. There he is. There he goes. Stopped and let out an explosion of barks. Albert ran to Sport's side. He could just make out the outline of a passenger ship approaching. The other ship might not see the hyacinth through the fog. The captain grabbed the whistle cord and blew one long whistle, two shorts. He repeated that pattern two times. That signaled, we're a stopped ship on open water. The two ships might have hit each other, but the crew on board the passenger ship heard the signal and pulled away just in time. Sport liked when the hyacinth visited Chicago. He always found new and exciting smells in the city. As the crew loaded coal, Sport often explored the docks. The captain would blow a whistle, calling him back when it was time to leave. They had to leave on time. The lighthouse keepers around the lake were counting on them to make their deliveries. But one day Sport wandered too far. A warehouse worker spotted him. He thought Sport looked like a good watchdog. He didn't know Sport already had a job. The man looped a rope around Sport's neck and led him to a warehouse. Sport didn't know what was going to happen or how he would get back to his ship. The next day, an ice wagon was out delivering ice to restaurants and grocery stores. The driver of the ice wagon recognized Sport. He had seen him on the docks before. Sport, what are you doing here? He turned to the warehouse worker. This dog belongs on the hyacinth. He needs to be returned to his ship. The iceman quickly untied the rope and told Sport to get in the wagon. I'm getting you home, Sport. The ice wagon raced to the docks. Sport didn't see his ship or crew anywhere. The hyacinth was gone. But he did see a ship he had seen before. The Indiana was one of the biggest ships on Lake Michigan. The captain looked down from the pilot house and called out, Is that sport? If that's sport, he can hitch a ride with us back to Milwaukee. How lucky it was that sport knew so many people on Lake Michigan. Sport got to ride in the freight section of the Indiana. Soon children started coming down from the ship's dining room to meet him.
They all wanted to hear the stories of the ship dog who fell in the Milwaukee River during a storm, who joined a crew and lived on a ship, who helped bring supplies to the lighthouses, who played baseball, who looked out for his crewmates on the hyacinth, and who had made friends all around the lake. Love that. Look at that. Sports getting a big hug. Afterward, the children told their families and friends about sport, and the story of sport continued to spread. Meeting the children on the passenger ship had been exciting, but sport was happy to be back with his crew on the hyacinth. He, here we go, let's see. He had good friends to play with and important work to do tomorrow. There he is. I'll get him up there. Oh, he's got that smile. That night, Sport fell asleep. To the sway of the ship and the sound of the water. He was a ship dog. And this ship was his home. Well, I hope you enjoyed sports story. I enjoyed reading it today. And I think little sport and big sport were listening. I'd like to share a few things before I leave. And one thing is the photographs that helped me write the story and also helped Renee draw very historically accurate illustrations for the book. This is a photograph of Sport on deck of the Hyacinth. You can see the pilot house there in the back, and you can see the wooden deck. And two crewmen are holding a life preserver around Sport's head. The man in the white is probably either the cook or a cook's assistant, and he's smiling. Sport's almost smiling, too. This photo reminded me or made me think they must have really liked sport to take the time to take a photo of him 100 years ago when it was, wasn't so easy to take photographs. Renee also, of course, used uh, many photos that we had. We had more photos of the ships and the ports and other ships of the time than we did of sport. But that was important because here's a photo of the ship and 160 feet long. You can see the rigging and, of course, the smokestack and um, the rooming areas. And then, of course, there would have been lots of storage down, to, down below and, of course, the decks. So that, this type of photo really helped Renee to be accurate. Also, photos of the crew at that time and the uniforms they wore, wore. I'd also from FUD like to show you a photograph of an ice wagon. This one happens to be from Oshkosh, and it's the Pure Ice and Coal Company. So when I go places, we talk about they sold ice in the summer, but they sold coal in the winter. So that's a fun thing to think about. Again, an ice wagon from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Now last week, Jerry Apps, reading his story, Eat Rutabagas, reminded me of my childhood, and I know there's a picture here somewhere of me holding some rutabagas when I was a little one. So I started looking for that photo, and I couldn't find it, but I will, and if I find it, I'll send it to Jerry, because he got me thinking of it. But I did find a couple pictures that I hadn't seen in a while. Here's a picture of my sister and I with our first dog, Nipper. Nipper looks was a big shepherd, and of course, we loved him. There we are in Iowa. And then I found a more recent photo of our two sons, Doug and David, with our dog Molly. An old photo and a new photo. When I started thinking, I bet around your house you could ask or find some photos that have been printed out and you could look at them with your family and do what I did, getting excited about the photos and then you could either write a story or talk about what happened in that photo or write a make makeup story, make your own story up. So I'm going to suggest maybe you try that. Look for photos and see how they might tell your family's story. 
I've enjoyed coming today. In the weeks to follow, I'll probably have some short activity videos online to give you some ideas how to do some water soundings. That was the way um, maritime people measured the depth of, of water. Um, let's see. Oh, log books. We might do some lighthouse signaling. And um, just some things to think about connected with sports story. Again, thank you for tuning in. Happy sailing. Thank you. Goodbye.